So I know right now you guys are saying to yourselves, Mr. Sokol, that video that you just talked about with the wave behaviors is, is just absolutely ridiculous. You said a lot of stuff and it was only 12 minutes long and I didn't get the whole thing. So I'm going to I'm going to piecemeal some of the stuff that we talked about. If you watch the Professor Dave explanation, he actually goes through real fast and he's really quite concise. I wish I had been uh, that concise when I tried to go through that whole section, although he skips part of it, um, most of the stuff at the end, or, or he skips the middle and, and a lot. So he was talking about um, um, constructive and destructive waves. And I think looking at the pictures in the book is great. And then looking at his video is great. But I want you to understand that the two waves that are coming at each other. And then there's another wave. And this one's heading in this direction. And this wave in the same medium is coming in this direction. They're going to add their, their amplitudes together when they crash. And they're going to, I guess, when, when, when that interference occurs, they're actually going to have a big old amplitude. And, and if they are the same, this is going to be twice the size. It's going to be two times the size if they have the same amplitude. Um, the other part was when those two waves come in contact with each other, when there is that interference, if, if they're opposites of one another, where you have the one wave like this and the other wave is like that, you know, even if their amplitudes aren't the same, they're going to pass underneath each other and they're going to smash down. So it, because this has a, a lower amplitude than this one, uh, when they come together, this amplitude will be just pretty small. You know, when they're both together, it really takes away a lot of it. Um, gets sucked down into this trough for the most part. But then they both go on their merry way. And come back to their their normal amplitudes, their original amplitudes, and it it seems it doesn't seem intuitive because it seems like, you know, waves are banging into each other and stopping each other all the time, and yeah, that's true, to a certain extent, but they're not ever stopping each other. Um, there's a lot of reflection going on, and the only other thing that. I didn't really get a chance to explain really well was uh, the, the diffraction or the diffusion piece. And he showed a really great example of a wave and, uh, coming into a boundary, but there's an opening in the boundary. And so we have a big wave coming in here, right? And it's going to get, it's going to hit in here and it's actually going to, come pouring out of here looking like that trying to get back to where it was um, that's really neat that 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 diffraction that diffusion uh, uh, type of idea and and those were the two things that I didn't really nail down when when I talked about it but that uh, professor Dave's uh, video explained a little bit uh, in better detail um, so that'll help you a little bit with with the idea. The other thing is, you know, whenever something hits a boundary, um, there are a couple of things that, that could change. Um, but uh, I think I was talking about radio frequencies uh, traveling through through medium, and, and I, I said it was, it was more difficult for that frequency to reach that certain distance, and I didn't mean that, it, that the frequency ever changed. What I meant was the frequency will always remain the same. It just has a harder time traveling through a thicker medium. Okay, so don't think of, of, of the frequency ever changing because the radio station never changes its numbers. Uh, it just sometimes you can't hear it because of too much funk in the middle. Okay, so those are the, the ideas that I didn't necessarily drive home, but I wanted to try one more time and and drive those home real fast.